Hey, what up, Dodgers Nation? DMAC here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. We've got some injury updates. We've got some bad news about Bruce Dar Gratterall, some roster updates. We're going to dive into those in just a second. But quick reminder for all latest Dodgers news, rumors, hype videos, breakdowns, and more all season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comments section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. On a scale of 1 to 10, how concerned are you about Bruce Dark Gratterall's injury? Let me know down below in the comments section. And how do you think they should use Miguel Vargas? Do you want to see Miguel Vargas over Hanser Alberto? How do you think his future plays out? Give me an over under two all-star teams in Miguel Vargas's career. Let me know down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So first, the good news, Clayton Kershaw is back, and so is Miguel Vargas. The Dodgers just tweet out, the Dodgers activated left-handed pitcher Clayton Kershaw from the injured list and recalled infielder Miguel Vargas from AAA Oklahoma City when the major league roster expanded to 28. So today, of course, it's September 1st, so those rosters expanded to 28, and you can add one position player, one pitcher. Of course, Clayton Kershaw, he's returned from the IL, and then also you have Miguel Vargas. But first, let's start with Clayton Kershaw. The left-hander hasn't made a start nearly a month. His last start came against the Giants on the road on August 4th, and in that game, he experienced some back pain. He left early, made a trip to the IL, and the big thing with Kershaw coming back, he didn't make a rehab start. No rehab start for Clayton Kershaw, and I think he's a guy that you don't need a rehab start. He's been throwing those bullpen sessions. He is ready to go. I think this is a case where he he could have been back a few weeks ago. They're just trying to preserve him for the postseason run. And Kirsch has been feeling really good in these simulated games and these bullpen sessions. He's fully built up. And Doc said that they think that that epidural is going to fully get him through the rest of the season and that this back injury is behind him. Also, you don't have to deal with that travel and put some more strain on that back. So it's definitely the right thing to do. And we'll see how he fares today against the New York Mets. And it's really perfect timing for the Dodgers because Tony Gonsolin a couple days ago he was placed on the IL he's going to miss a few starts due to that four on his and the reality with Clayton Kershaw is he's still one of the better pitchers in the league you just have to keep him healthy and you have to keep him fresh let's not forget he did start the all-star game this season and if you look at his numbers he has a 264 ERA a 272 FIB a 26.2 strikeout rate and a sterling 4.5 walk rate all he needs is the feel for that slide piece and he's going to go out there and be effective because he's staying low in the zone. He's throwing that slider. He's commanding that fastball. He's going to go out there and eat innings and give you quality starts. So let's just hope that he stays healthy and that he can continue this momentum into the postseason. I think the Dodgers have been very careful with him this season because they know for him to be at his best when it matters the most, he has to have some tread on the tires. So I'm really hoping Kershaw comes back and pitches well and he stays healthy and we don't see what we saw last season when he left with an injury on the third of the last game of the year against the Brewers and he was clutching that baseball a lot of fans feared that was the last time we were ever going to see Kershaw in the Dodgers uniform so let's not see that again and let's hope that he's ready to finish strong and then there's Miguel Vargas Miggy 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 can't you see getting Miggy with it I love me some Miguel Vargas and since he was optioned on August 8th he's had 1100 OPS with two bombs in 18 games for AAA OKC. And in his two games for the Dodgers in the show this season, he's gone two for eight with a double and a single. But in his first ever major league at bat, he hits a double into the gap. And then without even getting the sign to go, he steals third because he said that he felt that no one could stop him. So I think that was a glimpse into the confidence level of Miguel Vargas. He's got the swagger. He's got that star potential that you want to see. And I truly believe that they're really going to give him him an opportunity to see if he can stick because Hanser Alberto I love the guy he's a great clubhouse presence I love to switch it up I love his relationship with Joey Gallo everyone loves Hanser Alberto except the statistics and the statistics will tell you that he struggled all season long at the plate on the year Hanser Alberto is slashing 240 252 with a 346 slugging percentage a 71 WRC plus so his bat has been 29 
29% below league average. And in the last few months, he's continued to trend in the wrong direction. For the month of August, he has a 492 OPS, a 200 batting average. And he did pick it up in the month of July. We had 808 OPS. It was hitting 308, but really hasn't been consistent the entire season. But the bottom line is that they just haven't gotten the offensive production that they were expecting out of Hanser Alberto. And Miguel Vargas is a guy that has the potential to provide it on another level. Look, give me talent over experience in this situation. We saw in 2015 when they called up Corey Seager, the success that he was able to have. And I think for Miguel Vargas, a guy that is going to be a part of the core of your future, you want to get him up and you want to develop him at this level as soon as possible. Because it is clear that he has graduated from AAA and that the only thing that is left for him is to just establish himself at the big league level. And to me, when you consider the potential that he has at the plate to be an impact bat, especially against righties, I'm excited to see it. So Miguel Vargas, let's see if he makes the most of this opportunity and really carves out a little role for this team down the stretch. But now for the bad news. The Dodgers, they place Bruce Dar Gratterall on the injured list. The Dodgers tweet out, the Dodgers recalled right-handed pitcher Phil Bigford and placed right-handed pitcher Bruce Dar Gratterall on the 15-day injured list with right elbow inflammation retroactive to August 31st. Juan Toribio of MLB.com, he tweeted out, Dodgers' Bruce Dar Gratterall said he felt his elbow bothering him during his last outing against the Marlins. He's going to get an MRI tomorrow, which will determine how long he'll be sidelined. Then Fabian Ardaya of The Athletic tweeted out, Bruce Dar Gratterall said he's getting an MRI tomorrow. Didn't want to speculate on whether he feels he can be back this year until after that. Said he felt some more pain in his elbow today after trying to throw a bullpen session yesterday has bothered him since his last outing so the hope was that after that bullpen session that he was going to be feeling better they were even hoping that he'd pitch yesterday but he just didn't feel right and doc said today that they hope to get him back at some point in mid-september and they hope that he can come back and help this team but right now we'll see where it stands and what the results are with that mri and how the testing goes so there was a lot of talk monday about how many dodgers relievers were unavailable they had five to be exact. You saw Jake Reed get his first career save. Well, this helps explain that. And it's clear that he isn't right. And it's very unfortunate for the Dodgers because this season, he really has turned the corner when he's been on the mound. A 302 ERA, a 312 FIB, 39 punch outs and 10 walks in 44 and two thirds innings through 41 games this season. And he's allowed just one run in his last 19 appearances. So he's been really effective out there on the mound. He's a guy that has that stuff that plays up in the postseason. You saw how big of a contributor he was for the Dodgers in the 2020 postseason. Hey, you got to give your big thanks to Cody Bellinger for keeping that home run from Tatis in the yard because that might change things when you look back at that postseason run for the bazooka. But still, he's a guy that definitely is an emotional leader out of that bullpen. He's a guy that has that triple-digit heat. He's continuing to develop those secondary pitches and continuing to miss more bats. But this could be a big blow to to this Dodgers bullpen that has seen Craig Kimbrell struggle. But you have had Chris Martin since that trade. He's been very effective. He's had some arm issues. That arm's been barking for him a little bit. And then the big question is Blake Trinan. Can Blake Trinan come back and reestablish himself as the Dodgers' best high leverage reliever? To me, that's one of the biggest questions for the Dodgers down the stretch. And the good news is that he's completed his rehab assignments. He is ready to go. The Dodgers are expected to activate him tomorrow for their game against the Padres at home. So that that's definitely great news for the Dodgers. And then also Yancy Almonte, he threw a bullpen session yesterday. And it was the first time that he's done that since heading to the IL with that forearm tightness. So getting Yancy Almonte back, getting Blake Trinan back is going to be massive to solidify this bullpen down the stretch. And let's not forget about Fireman Phillips. Dr. Filth, the numbers he's put up this season, they're eye-popping. In his last 43 games, Evan Phillips has a .42 
ERA across 42 and two-thirds innings. So this is not a fluke. This is who he is. He is one of the best high-leverage relievers in all of Major League Baseball this season. Let's not forget, the Dodgers, they picked him up off of waivers. They claimed him off waivers from the Tampa Bay Rays, and they turned him in to one of the best relievers in all of Major League Baseball. So the bruised dart injury is definitely a blow, but there are some reinforcements on the way, and we'll keep you updated after we get news about the MRI from bruised dart. So the great news, Kershaw's back. He's saying he's feeling good, feeling ready to go. He's saying his back is healthy. And I think the Dodgers have really played this perfectly with Clayton Kershaw to have him optimize for the postseason. Because with Bueller out for the year, Tony Gonson having some injury issues, I don't think it's too severe, too serious with him. I think he'll be back and be just fine. They're going to need Clayton Kershaw to make some big starts in October if this team wants to win it all. So he's crucial to their success. Now, to me, when it comes to Bruce Dark Gratterall, I am definitely a little concerned because you've heard the about the issues with his shoulder and you heard some whispers about maybe he's going to need some surgery down the road. There's a reason why the Red Sox had some concerns in the Mookie trade because they were a little concerned. And look, any guy that can throw 100, 101 miles per hour with that ease, it's a little concerning, but hopefully it's not a real issue because he's a guy that can really provide a lift for this Dodgers pen as well. But let me know down below in the comment section how concerned are you about Bruce Dark Gratterall's injury and do you want to see Miguel Vargas take up Hanser Alberto's plus spots and time in the postseason? To me, look, Hanser Alberto, great guy, highest paid mascot in all of sports. Now, I'm just playing. I love you, Hanser. But I just don't think that Hanser is the answer coming off that bench for the Dodgers. You need guys that can go up there with the stick and give you big at-bats. And I think Miguel Vargas is a great opportunity for him to really show what he's got, show that star power. So I'm very excited to see it. But let me know down below in the comment section, what are your thoughts? Do you want to see Miguel Vargas have a bigger role on this team? Do you want to see him supplant Hanser Alberto on the bench? Let me know down below. And also, what are your thoughts on Bruce Dar's injury and Kershaw, him coming back? Let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel, smash that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.